Dovan. Uh, maganda ka po po. Yung uh, iba pa ka dito sa inyo ngayon ay uh, ay uh, bahagi din ng aking uh, dissertation sa PhD in uh, management. Uh, this dissertation is titled Ancestral Domain Management, Harmonizing Policies and uh, Institutional Mechanisms. Uh, this is the outline of uh, my presentation. We start with the brief background, research methodology. We would like to inform you about the IP sector. A brief situation here. The key policies that uh, I reviewed, the institutional mechanisms that are currently in place, and uh, findings and finally conclusions and recommendations. So this is the uh, brief background. In uh, while doing this research, I was able to uh, serve as uh, evaluator and uh, and uh, facilitator of uh, several IP development projects of uh, ILO and uh, European Union. And at the same time, I also serve as uh, facilitator of the preparation and development of. IP master plan where I documented a lot of uh, multi-sectoral, regional stakeholders, focus group discussion and consultation. And uh, the outputs of that were incorporated in this research with the conference of the funding agencies in the national region and indigenous people. So the general impression is that uh, among stakeholders, in ancestral domain management and the IP sector, there is a perceived notion that there is a need for harmonization of policies and institutional mechanisms. That's why in the draft IP master plan, the harmonization of policies, institutional mechanisms, programs, and services in the IP sector is one of the priority areas for policy study and policy development. However, on the ground, there's a really strong uh, feeling that uh, uh, among ICCs or IPs that there's overlapping policies and institutional mechanism of various NDAs, LGUs, and even non-government organizations. And uh, this is the theoretical framework. This is uh, derived from the IP master plan development framework. Uh, at the center, you may notice that there are four bundles of rights the IP, ancestral domain and lands, self-governance, empowerment, social justice and human rights, and cultural integrity. There are institutions around, policies being implemented, and there are programs from national to local government. And the development of IP master learning starts from community uh, building program, the ancestral domain, the uh, IP regional action plan, and finally the IP master plan. The outputs are actually the outputs of uh, NCIP as an institution, which include uh, ancestral lands and domain recognized, titled, and registered, self determination of IP is strengthened, and social justice and human rights of IP is recognized, protected, and strengthened, as well as culture, tradition, institutions preserved and protected. And of course, the impact is the uh, sectoral and national concerns of uh, the National Commission and the Indigenous People, uh, which is empowerment and uh, protection of social justice and human development in the Philippines. And from there, uh, we de I derived the theoretical framework where if the policies and social mechanisms are harmonized, it will lead to effective management of ancestral domains and uh, will deliver efficient programs and services to IPs and finally to achieve social justice and human development by indigenous people. Further, the conceptual framework in uh, the study of key policies where, and the institutional mechanism and the uh, uh, back, back, uh, the middle and conducted policy analysis on jurisdiction over the ancestral domain and institutional review of models implementing mechanisms and roles and, and uh, responsibilities of the stakeholders to develop and propose institutional mechanisms and uh, that will harmonize policies on 
jurisdictions over the ancestral domain. Uh, study have three major, three uh, sub problems. Problem number one is uh, what are the sources of conflicts in the implementation of IPRA? IPRA stands for IP uh, Indigenous Peoples Rights Act, with other key policies on jurisdiction and how these policies be harmonized to achieve effective management of ancestral domains. Problem number, number two is uh, what are the current institutional mechanisms in place and how this can be harmonized and strengthened to efficiently deliver programs and services to IPs. Problem number three, what are the implementing models adopted in the ancestral domain, sustainable development and protection plans or community development plans, and how these models can harmonize policies and institutional mechanisms in the management of ancestral domain. So there are three layers uh, at the national level, at the local level, and uh, at the community level. Of course, the objective is to describe and analyze these uh, key policies, institutions, and promote measures to effectively manage the ancestral domain. The assumption of the study is that despite the perceived conflicts, the key policies and institutional mechanisms that overlap in the management of ancestral domain can be harmonized to further advance the interest and welfare of the indigenous peoples. And the significance of study, if this is of uh, significance at all, is to contribute to policy, public policy and institutional development for the management of 280 ancestral domains, which are already awarded, and uh, some with the uh, application. This represents more than 7 million hectares and directly inhabited by more than 1 million IPs. And hopefully to contribute to the value of knowledge and ancestral domain management. The scope and limitation focus mainly on the determination of conflicts and the implementation of policies, limited scopes on the jurisdiction aspect of the rights to ancestral domain, and focus on the institutional models. I will, I will uh, discuss later on current institutional models at the uh, community level of IPs. And the research and methodology, I do some regulation, policy analysis, institutional review, and key informants and focus discussions. In terms of policy analysis, uh, I review relevant provisions on ancestral domain management uh, to determine conflicts and implementing mechanisms, identify harmonizing factors, and uh, do some recommendations for harmonization of policies. In terms of institutional review, I reviewed the NCIP as created as under IPRA. The role of the stakeholders is admitted upon in the IP master plan. There are sample interagency and convergence mechanisms. There are LGU institutions models. There are implementing mechanisms for the SDP implementation, which I reviewed. Uh, eight countries, countries in Canada, uh, the IP development program funded by ILO. The EPSDAD, or uh, Empowering Indigenous Peoples for Sustainable Development in Ancestral Domain, that covers 26 uh, county holders. And uh, Lake Cebu IP Project in South Tobacco, and Lino Hawaiian Watershed Project in Oriental Kingdom. These are the whole grades of uh, the ads DPPs I, I reviewed for this study. And for the only four months, I at least I interviewed 20 key informants distributed, five in Mindarao, five in Luzon, and five in Visayas. And these are, uh, this covers NGAs, LGUs, NGOs, and IPOs. And also several stakeholders consultation during the preparation of IP master plan in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindarao. So, medyo marami-rami yung data na nag-generate dito at uh, i-pass to do sa study. And uh, the experts profile are directors, CEO, chairman of the board of directors, and chairman and council of elders. So, yung mga datu na naabutan ko along the, uh, the my participation in various projects. These are state policy, we know already that uh, the Philippine Constitution and indigenous peoples promotes the protection and welfare of the indigenous peoples. So, I mean, 
for the ICS IP IPs. Kaya nung tayong general notions, yun sila. Uh, refers to a group of people or homogeneous societies identified by self-ascription and ascription by others. Yung uh, tinanggap mo o tinuturing ka na ikaw ay IP. Na meron nung uh, where continuously live as organized community on communally bounded and defined territory and who have under claims of ownership since time immemorial. So meron siyang uh, ay yung pa mga ninunungon. Ancestral domain, ang ibig sabihin sa Tagalog ay lupa at katutubo. And where the ICCs and IPs? Meron ng 110 ethnolinguistic groups. Ang sabi nila, according to official uh, government estimate, there are 14 million people na IP. With uh, meron tayong 100 million, ibig sabihin nun, 14% of uh, the Filipino people are IPs. And uh, 7.7, they covered 7.7 .7 million hectares. Ang uh, Pilipinas ay 30 million hectares. Which means, 25% ng uh, Pilipinas ay assessor domain. So, ganun po malaki yung uh, IP. Ang sabi nila si Vice President Binay daw ay ibanag. And therefore, we have an IP Vice President na mayroong opportunity na maging president. In terms of socioeconomic situation since 2002, uh, bar studies and survey reported that indigenous people's human development indicators are lower and poverty indicators are higher, are higher than those of the rest of society. I think uh, this statement is still, is still true today. Ito ho yung poverty situation sa mga probinsya. No? Yung top, ito yung top 20 poorest provinces. Yung lahat ng dilaw, yan yung malalaki yung IP population. So, very much correlated yung uh, number ng IP population in terms of poverty incidence. So, nandun sila sa mahihirap na probinsya. Kung saan merong malaking concentration ng IPs, Nandun yung uh, malaking poverty incidence. Now, yung all rates ng ancestral domain. Pricing lands, inland waters, coastal areas, natural resources, including forest, pasture, residential, and cultural, and other lands, individually owned or community owned. So, yan yung all rates ng uh, IT. Uh, ito yung binabangin ko kanina na 7.7 .7 million. Yung 4.2 million is already awarded to 156 IP organizations. And there are 130 uh, IPOs na mayroon pang application applying for another 3 million hectares of uh, ancestral domain lands. So mahaba pa yung process ng NCIP and uh, uh, out of 7.7 .7 million hectares, yung may application ay mayroon 7.3. So, kaya ako ang pinupuntahan ngayon ng malaking mga plantation, rubber plantations, at iba iba mga industrial plantations sa yung mga IP areas. So, yung palm oil dito sa Karaga ay nakatayo sa ancestral domain land. They are renting 3,000 per hectare per year sa IP. So, Okay. What's inside the ancestral domain? Ano yung nasa loob niya? Still home to the remaining forest and watershed adjacent to our reefs. 98% out of 128 identified key biodiversity areas na doon po sa loob ng ancestral domain. Reefs biodiversity and mineral resources. Some are under integrated forest management agreement or mineral partnership sharing agreement. Yun ang kulay dilaw, yan yung bilang ng mining projects sa loob ng ancestral domain. So, napakadaming mining projects. Yung kulay blue yung ipma, at yung kulay pink ay yung mga dam. Yung mga dam mo na yan ang nagpo-provide ng hydropower sa ating bansa. So, yung ancestral domain is providing a lot of resources uh, sa ating economy. So, hydropower, mining, uh, forest 
this or sexual. And these are the key policies related to ancestral domains. Of course, the general law, the special laws, the supplementary policies, and procedural, pol procedural policies. Ito po yung uh, review natin at tinignan natin kung paano ito ang nag-contribute sa management of the ancestral domain. And uh, in terms of institutional uh, mechanisms at the national level, Meron NCIP na meron siyang total staff na 1,588 nationwide. So, kung meron ka 40 billion people, IP, meron 1,588 na nagsusupport sa kanila. Plus, of course, other government agencies. Uh, this is directly under the office of the President. Kung may isang palipat-lipat siya, nililipat sa office of the uh, DNR Secretary, Office of the Executive Secretary, uh, one time na nandun siya sa Office of the Department of Agrarian Reform. Nililipat-lipat siya depending on the pleasure of the President. I think I discussed this already. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na na dun sa, dun sa ancestral domain, uh, kung sa LGU meron tayong tinatawag na comprehensive land use plan at sa Pilipinas meron tayong tinatawag na medium term Philippine development plan yung indigenous peoples meron din ang tawag nila doon ay ancestral domain sustainable development and protection plan sometimes the ads DPP covers several municipalities several provinces uh, several cities several barangays it depends on the size of the uh, of the county. Uh, merong sa Bukid Noy, yung pinakamalaki ay 102,000 hectares sa mga county po. So halos pag-aari nila yung mga yung mga uh, Bukid Noy. Yung proseso ng ISDPP adapts approaches where ICC's IP's views on development which puts emphasis on the intergenerational responsibility of the present generation comprehensively and sustainably manage the, the ancestral domain and all resources therein. This is basically a participatory process, but at the same time, need technical and financial assistance. Uh, when you with your capacity and capability in terms of financial and human resources ng IPs, kaya kailangan nila yung assistance from NGOs, international organizations, and other development partners. Ito naman yung mga models, o yung pinabagin ko kanina na uh, institutional mechanisms on the ground. Uh, I studied yung uh, ILO IP development plan in Caraga which they adapted in participatory de development approach. Yung uh, UNDP na empowering IP, uh, they documented traditional IP structure and facilitated site registration of IP organization. So, Meron po ting conflict dito yung mga IP structure mo ng mga dato at uh, ibang structure nila bilang ay pinaregistro mo sa SEC. Iba na yung structure niya. Uh, naging board of directors na yung council of elders. Kaya kung minsan uh, ginagawa nila, iba yung pang-registration nila, iba yung council of elders nila. So yung proseso ay medyo nakadisart sa current institutional mechanisms. In Lake Cebu project, they established Ancestral Domain Management Board. And in Lino Kauai Watershed Management Project, the Raya Mangyan adopted its Kaplano. Meron po sila pinatawag na Kaplano, equivalent to sa comprehensive land use plan. At kung tatangin mo sila, ano yung development projects na priority nila? Ito yung mga priority projects na sinabi nila, out of 26, uh, IP communities or IP organizations in terms of agriculture, yun yung mga binanggit na priority areas nila na kailangan nila. Sa environment, nandiyan din, no? uh, living perimeter fence. Uh, akala ko ano yung, akala ko magbabakod. Ano? Ang ibig ko pala sabihin yan, napapakuran mo yung iyong uh, area pero tatanimal mo na ang puno. Halimbawa, puro nara. Yung tipong ganun. Yung pala yung kanilang perimeter fence. So, parang 
yung mohol sa halip na simento ay mga living perimeter plants. Yung mineral resources nila, wala silang sinabi gusto nila mag-mining. Ang sabi lang nila, magtitinda lang sila ng sand and gravel. At saka ipapalis pa nila yung kanilang river basin. So kung makasin nyo, wala sa priority nila yung mining, pero ang daming mining sites doon sa ancestral domain na tinalangin natin kanina. They also cover education, health, water supply. Ito yung mga priority projects nila kung sila'y pamimiliin. Mababaw lang yung paligyan niya. Gusto nila nila magtayo ng barangay, tribal health center. Ganito lang po yung target nila. Iba yung itinidikta ng national government, ng local government, dun sa gusto nila. Pagka pinag-compare natin yung projects na gusto ng NGA, ng LGU, at yung project na nanggaling dun sa mga communities na ito. Of course, they need this project. In terms of yung sa unang question kanina, ito yung unang findings natin, while there are perceived conflicts in the provisions of laws, responses of the informants indicate that sources of conflicts are more on institutional, procedural, and the people implementing the policies, not on the provisions of the law. Ang sinasabi nila, wala ang mga problema dun sa batas. Harmonize naman yung mga provision ng batas, kaya lang may papagulo yung mga implementasyon, yung mga tao na nag-implement dito at yung mga institutions na merong kanya-kanyang interest. There are actually harmonizing policies, The Joint Memorandum Circulat of DAR, DNR, NLRA, and NCIP para maharmonize yung uh, uh, clarifying the stating and interpreting the respective jurisdiction of policies on lands. Ito kasi yung mga agencies na to ay lahat nakatutok sa land registration. No? Uh, kaya kung minsan meron tayong mga lupain na iba-iba yung o patong-patong yung titulo because of these institutional mechanisms in the registration of lands. Uh, however, for the implementation of IPRA, uh, they created a joint national committee, joint regional committee on DAR, DNR, LRA, and CIP concerns to harmonize the policies on land management. On protected area management, the joint DNR and CIP memorandum circular, which uh, defined the management of overlapping protected areas. So, meron ng mga Uh, policies that are trying to harmonize uh, assets for domain management. On local governance, there is experience in Palawan, the harmonization of e and the strategic environmental plan of the province. Even in comprehensive land use plan, uh, some LGUs have adopted the formulated as DPPs, but only few. Uh, marami pa yung challenges na uh, maraming as DPP or ay hindi naka-integrate o hindi naka-mainstream. On water resource issues, meron din conflict yung local water district. Uh, basta na lang kumukuha ng tubig na hindi nagpapaalam to ancestral domain. But the creation of water uh, district of PD-98 ay Already stated that in the acquisition of water or water rights, the districts have operated with existing agencies to govern the Philippines. So, dapat nag-ipag-usap siya sa NCIP. On mining operations, bago dapat makapagsimula ng pamimina, dapat ay dumadaan muna sa tinatawag na FPIC. Yung pre and then for consent. Ito yung tinatawag na FPIC. At pagka nagkasundo yung IP at saka yung uh, kumpanya, and then there will be final agreement. So meron ng mga uh, harmonization scheme. Uh, susundin lang, no? However, there are integrity issues on the issuance of FPIC. Uh, meron ng mga allegations na minadali, uh, minadali obra, nilagyan. Kaya kahit tayo ng mga IP na magkaroon ng minahan, nagkakaroon ng minahan. That's why there is a general consensus to amend the uh, FPIC guidelines. So 
So the price is the definition of jurisdiction already. It's there in the e-price itself. Uh, it's just a matter of implementation of the provisions of the law. However, to you must care. While it is awarded to IP under IPRAS, there is a Supreme Court ruling in 2000, up three years after IPRA, stating that uh, there is nothing in the law that grants the indigenous peoples ownership over the natural resources, resources within their ancestral domains. We say, if you have a it will be a IPRA does not therefore violate, violate the regalian doctrine of ownership, management, and utilization of natural resources. You know, sinasabing regalian doctrine is the authority of the state to acquire properties and natural resources. So, kaya kahit may dito dyan, may langis siya, nasa ancestral domain niya, hindi yan pag-aari ng IP. Pag-aari niya ng Estado at siya ay meron lang ang porsyento na isang porsyento ng gross. So, yun po ang masakit na katotohanan. That's why according to to uh, International Committee on the Economic uh, Report, prepared by NGOs, it says that the IPRA is only constitutional insofar as it is consistent with the Regalian Doctrine. Despite the fact that by definition, the doctrine is incompatible with the concept of indigenous people's ancestral domain. By subordinating the ancestral domain rights of IP to Regalian Doctrine, the Supreme Court interpreted IPRA in a manner that is perverse, discriminatory, and unjust and contrary to the inherent principle underlying the recognition of IPs. It should also be noted that the petition rendering the IP unconstitutional was filed in 1998 in the Supreme Court by those supporting the mining sector to declare the IPRA unconstitutional. So, we do not allow the mga advocate na mining sector. Problem number two at the national level and to the institutional mechanism. NCIP should be the primary agency responsible for the formulation and implementation of policies. At the local LGU levels, there are several mechanisms already in place. An example, in Indoro, there is Municipal IP Development Advisory Council. In Antique, there is already a provincial Indigenous Peoples Council created through an ordinance. So, Meron mga LTUs that are friendly, already friendly to the indigenous peoples. And there are already representative or representation in, in local governance. As of 2010, uh, meron 104 IP leaders uh, who are appointed in the local councils. Kaya lang marami natin sa barangay level. Uh, meron mga uh, kusiyan ng bayan isang kursyal sa uh, isang board member at isang city councilor. At the ancestral domain level, the institutions in place are those that are uh, uh, that remains traditional structure, council of elders, and indigenous peoples organizations. So only recently in 2012, uh, nabuo yung IPRA 1997, only in 2012, that NCIP issued an administrative order to register indigenous people's organizations. So, napakatagal ako kaya napilitan pa mag-register sa SEC. Ano? Kung ito lang na hindi na sana na nag-register sa SEC, NCIP can already issue uh, registration to effect the legal identity of IPs, similar to the authority of the Cooperative Development Authority. It defines IP master plan and institutional mechanisms the role of its organization, NCIP, of course, uh, under IPRA, uh, the NGAs, they shall provide uh, services and development projects, the local government unit shall coordinate convergence, and the NGOs, PO shall provide technical assistance for capacity building, similarly with the private sector and international development. Uh, there's a lot of investment in the ancestral domain, but it should be not destructive. In terms of institutional level, uh, community level, ito yung standard arrangement as per IPRA. Uh, there should be a tribal council or council of elders. 
Ang functions nito ay mainly advisory, also legislative and judiciary. Ang basihan yung uh, customary laws. Merong IP organizations which the functions basically executive. Ang basihan nila yung bylaws and sec registration. Merong ads DPP as an overall program. Ang basis is the consensus of the community. The ads DPP cannot be dictated by one person. It should be it should undergo uh, several consultation and uh, consensus of the community. And in terms of development projects, the papaso, alibawa, ang private sector, ang government, ang LGU, uh, that may cover social, economic, environment, at kailangan po ng FBIC. In IPDP, Canada, meron silang dinamit doon, uh, nag-develop ng convergence, at yung concept ng mga participatory development approach, Uh, they define their institutions, they define their programs, they define their policies to achieve their desired outcome and desired impact. Ito ho yung mekanismo niyan. Uh, nung nagpunin nila yung ASDPPS basis, they prepare a convergence action plan. Yung convergence action plan covers ito, social, economic, political, cultural, and environmental. At nung nagpunin nila yan, They enter into convergence agreement with LGUs and NGAs. So, kumira na yung LGUs, kumira na yung private sector, kumira na yung mga NGOs. At nagpusira ng convergence ni WG para mag-implement nung napagkasunduan nila. Pero, ang administrative and organizational mechanism pa rin ay yung IP organizations. So, in this case, they were able to mainstream the ads DPP at the local government level, at the provincial level, at the municipal level, at the barangay level. Kaya yung translation yan, mga ikwento sa inyo, merong isang IP doon na yung pag-transact na sa, na sa halip na middleman, yung namimili ng kanilang mga sali, ang namimili na ng sali nila, yung association nila, at nakikipag-transact na sila dito through letter of agreement, dito na sa tabitin. Ay siniship na lang nila yung kanilang banana dito na binabayaran. Dito na binibili, dito na binabayaran. Because of this mechanism, uh, na empower yung IP economically, hindi lang politically but economically. Uh, nabawasan yung, uh, yung uh, middleman. In summary, conflicts are more on the procedures and institutions, not on the provisions of laws, but can be harmonized. Institutions should convert programs and services to local and ancestral domain levels. Dapat yung mga support groups doon pumunta, doon mag-converse. Ako usapin yung IP organizations para hindi mapolitika. And at the same time, the IP structure, the IP organizations shall be the local institutions in the management of the ancestral domains. Uh, Subclusion, IPRA as a special law Should be, direct, should be recognized by privacy over jurisdictions of the ancestral domains. Ito ang mga ecosystem sa batas. Pagka meron ng issue ng minahan, at meron ng issue ng protected area, at meron ng issue ng conflict on water management, dapat ang privacy na ay ang ancestral domain. According to IPRA, uh, yung inclusivity nito, kung 1997 meron mga existing agreements, ay it shall continue but after the agreement ita turn over na yun sa NCIP and then the IP will take over so kung meron dyan may agreement na naglapse na after 25 years ita take over na yun ng NCIP at saka ng IP organization so kaya meron, meron perception of conflict because uh, other institutions are also fighting for their uh, own uh, policies, which sometimes conflict with IPRA, well, in fact, there's no conflict naman kung uh, susundin lang nila yung batas o kung magbibigayan. Recommendation, strengthen dialogue among agencies to harmonize procedural policies and for LGUs to, to seriously consist, consider ancestral domains in the comprehensive life plan in order to the provisions of IPRA. IPRA. And for IP organization to strengthen its jurisdiction over the sustainable development and protection of the ancestral domain. Ang situation po kasi, 
kahit na meron sila at CDP, very weak yung very weak yung capacity kung pagsasamantalahan ng mga private uh, sector o papaigutin ng LGU at ng national government agencies uh, nakukot pa sila talaga uh, na-influence pa kaya dapat tulungan silang lumakas bilang isang true and genuine IP organizations In terms of problem number two, the conclusion is that with IPRA and the school's funding institution mechanism there is strong mandate for MTAs to ensure efficient delivery and programs of services but there is a need for greater convergence so uh, mandate ito yung mga, yung mga NGAs sa IPDUs na mag-converge sana kaya lang uh, isang challenge ito no, yung convergence and not only in the IP areas but uh, also in other communities where uh, some national government agencies are even competing or not coordinating the implementation of government services. Recommendations for NCIP to seriously carry out its mandate in accordance with IPRA. For NGAs, LGUs, and private sector NNDOs converge their program projects. And for IPs to strengthen its institutions and demand facilitate convergence of programs and services. Uh, maraming ng IP organization that are already demanding that we will not uh, we will not accept your project if you will not converse. So, medyo nagdi-demand na no, yung mga strong IP organization and that should be the case. The IP organization should demand from government, local and national, that they should converse. Conclusion in the implementation of ICDPPs, CDPPs, IPs, and IPOs can facilitate the organization of procedural policies and institutional mechanisms in the management of ancestral domain. The experience of Caraga in facilitating convergence action plans, MOUs and TWGs can serve as institutional model for harmonization of policies and institutional and implementation of ancestral domains. Maganda yung naabot nila doon, yung ILO ay very facilitative at hinayaan nila na mag-desisyon yung mga IP organizations. In fact, meron na ibang IP organization doon, sabi nila bakit hinayaan natin si Governor at si Mayor at mga private organization na minahin yung ating lupain. Sabi nila bakit hindi tayo magtayo ng sarili nating kumpanya at tayo nga yung makipagnegosasyon sa Australia para tayo na yung makipagnegosasyon sa pagbimina sa atin naman yung lupa and uh, they're already along that line. Integration, uh, since 2002, You know, United Nations Special Rapporteur Report already said that there is implementation gap between the law themselves, implementation gap between the law themselves and their effective applications at the local level. And this is still true today. That institutional mechanisms and external advocate implementation are not always available. But so open powerful economic political interest override the laws themselves, leaving indigenous communities without due protection of their rights. So, itong uh, statement na ito noong 2002 ay valid pa rin hanggang ngayon. Matama niya sa ito. Naliyo ko ito. Okay. Summary integration. Uh, the study shows that uh, if the policies, special laws, procedural laws will be harmonized, it will result to effective management of ancestral domain that recognizes uh, counties and IP organizations and uh, they improve institutional me mechanisms where NCIP is leading and facilitating convergence of NGAs, LGUs, NGOs and partners will result in efficient delivery of, of programs and services to IPs. All of this will result to justice and human development by and for indigenous peoples. So these are a major differences. And I believe that ancestral domains belongs to the IP children. Thank you very much.
everything is clear? Sabi ko na, pag wala nang tanong yan. <laughs> Ako ang ma-assign na muna magtanong and then the others will follow. Uh, the issue of indigenous peoples is very close to my heart. I'm an anthropologist. And in, the, in uh, 1997, I was very involved. We were not sure that the IPRA law was going to be enacted. And so I was asked to write a national program on indigenous peoples. DNR, FASPO, and the UNDP. Uh, what was enacted was a very watered down version of what the indigenous peoples wanted. Siyempre, very strong interest of Congress, those uh, congressmen and senators who were who uh, owned the big logging companies, the ranches, and all, and uh, suddenly uh, we recognized ay mga indigenous peoples. So my question is, did your study look into the conflicting worldviews of uh, indigenous peoples and uh, well, the other stakeholders, including the state, in terms of, for example, the way they look at the, I would look at the environment as sacred. And I, I remember yung mga, kasi at the time, Fidel Ramos was the president. He signed the uh, IPRA law. So, meron siyang the social reform agenda, and there were agencies that were designated as the flagship champion. So, the flagship champion for indigenous peoples was the DENR. It's very interesting because DENR have for the IPs and that's because of the close relationship of environment and culture. Pero ibang pananaw ng mga IPs tukos sa environment, tukos sa... At ang malaking concept na pinagtalunan dun sa mga... There were forums where pinag-usapan yung law eh. Uh, and the big issue there was exactly that, comes, that word ownership. The IPs, in fact, didn't want to use the word ownership. Sa kanila, closer yung stewardship. And, and now, pinag-aawayan ngayon yung regalian doctrine. Because our, our, tayo, mainstream concept of ownership is something about titles and that, yeah. that human beings can own land. But the IP concept is really so different from that. So I wonder in your study if you went into these contrasting worldviews, especially about the term ownership versus stewardship. Yeah. Uh... Natas ko po ito dun sa uh, review of uh, literature and uh, the really competing views but uh, it should be recognized the IPs have different views uh, the congressman have different views and uh, purely legal and iba even Supreme Court uh, iba yung uh, yung junior even the NCIP is not in consonance with it's not in agreement with the Supreme Court ruling but uh, Ang sabi nga ng mga abogado, kung kaya ay in-uphold ng Supreme Court, eh, habang nandiyan yan, at habang hindi binabago ng Supreme Court, that will stay. So, kaya ngayon, dapat meron uling ma-open na batas, uh, meron uling ma-open na kaso, na magkakaroon ng opportunity ang Supreme Court na mabago yung kanyang desisyon. Yung uh, memorandum agreement between uh, uh, Mindanao, yung MILF at saka Governor of the Philippines, ay muli bumalik yun eh. Yung issue ng ancestral domain. At bumalik ulit ito, yung uh, regalian doctrine na, na issue. At pinalik ang ulit itong uh, decision ito ng Supreme Court. Uh, ang sabi doon, kailangan ulit i-challenge. Dahil iba na yung posisyon ng Supreme Court ngayon, kumpara ng 2000, noong no, uh, year 2000, uh, binigyan ito ng decision. So, yun po. Uh, there are really uh, different worldviews on uh, the ownership and uh, stewardship concept. Other questions?
concept by uh, the government. Uh, a part of the license area was applied as ancestral domain. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, the forest law says that there should be selective logging, diversity improvement, and enrichment planting in the forest. Mm -hmm. uh, in your uh, plan, master plan, is this implementation, is the implementation of the forest law a part of the mechanic of the plan? Uh, ang sabi po ng uh, IPRA, after the 1997, after the enactment of the law, those uh, areas under the jurisdiction of uh, other government agencies like DNR shall be transferred to NCIB if those areas is uh, applied or awarded to uh, a certificate of ancestral domain title. Ngayon kung yan ay meron pang uh, uh, integrated forest uh, agreement at uh, papatapusin po yung uh, agreement when it lasts and then it will be uh, transferred to NCIB and it will be awarded to uh, county applicants which is uh, the IP organization. So, you know, uh, ang nasa batas. Ngayon, kung hindi pa yan nag-lapse, uh, magtutuloy-tuloy lang siya hanggang mag-lapse siya ulit. Hanggang mag-lapse siya. Ngayon, kung gusto niya mag-renew, uh, mag-renew siya, pero mag-aagal ko na siya ng FBIC. O yung pre and prior informed consent. Uh, kung papayagal pa siya ng IP organization na mayroong uh, title, uh, well and good. Uh, papasok pa siya sa ganun. Uh, depende kung uh, ano ang uh, agreement ng uh, IP organizations. They still have the options to to allow ng IPs to develop their areas and to invest in their uh, areas subject to memorandum of agreement. Uh, because uh, when I was there, the natives do not like selective logging. Mm -hmm. They have their own system. Kaya ngayon. Kaya ngayon. Okay, in system and uh, well uh, we forest in the forestry profession uh, do not support this kind of system we, we shall maintain the forest that is why I feel guilty now because because of my implementation of selective logging in uh, Karaga region the two companies dismiss me from their uh, ranks and uh, well, when I was uh, teaching in the College of Forestry here and in my research forester of ERDB, we tried to go back to the area uh, we, we helped destroy and uh, do some uh, investment planting or reforestation mm -hmm. system. But the problem is, again, the people out there say, no, this is our area. Do not interfere. Do not come in. Mm -hmm. You stay outside our area. Uh, did you? Did you? Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, the one uh, I said that uh, uh, the people, the indigenous peoples, are becoming more and more aware of their uh, rights to their ancestral domain. That's why they are they are already asserting that right. So, when you naging asserting na sila. They're asserting na sila. Yan ho ba yung pinabawag ito? Yung PICO? Yeah. Yan ho. No? So, nandun pa yung uh, plantation na yun. But, uh, it's now under the jurisdiction of uh, the IP organization. But, uh, still forest. But, uh, marami namang uh, minahan. For your information pala, yung isang pinakamalaking uh, gold deposit, saka copper deposit sa buong Asia, ay nandito sa isang IP ancestral domain uh, dito sa South Cotabato yung tambangan, gold and copper uh, deposit so ngayon ang pagbibila nun ay IP organizations yung IP na yun ay talagang hayaman Thank you Sir Lope for that very interesting presentation may we, may we now call on Dr. Sal Cadiz the program manager of uh, for knowledge management